You're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis show. And <coughs> here on News File, we put Ghana um, first. And um, YK, you want to correct something which I, I saw you, you needed it, but I didn't want to read into it. That when you said, when a professional is overly friendly in their line of duty, is that not being unprofessional? That's what you really meant to say. Thank you for bringing that correction uh, back to our attention. And just a small bit, which also escaped me, that in the course of the discussions, there are people who also don't know and think that um, the police officer, because of her name, Adodankwa, is related to the president. Please check. She's not, um, as far as I know. And she's been one of those who has also <coughs> suffered her fair share of the political football with transfer as punishment of police officers. And when I was doing my takes on the series of why we are not winning the corruption fight, and I did the series on police officers being transferred as punishment to truncate you know, investigations and other things that was going on. She was one of those I wrote about without naming. <laughs> All right. Now, let's uh, look at Ameri. And Ameri has become such a big issue that for since the government assumed, the MPP assumed the reins of government, um, it's been a topical issue, starting with the Addison Committee that did the value for money audit, and then subsequently we have Pricewaterhouse and Coopers also doing an audit. And then we have um, Katie Hammond going to Parliament to seek a rescission of the deal. Yesterday, the committee whose work is being boycotted by the minority um, had the opportunity to hear from uh, Mary and also to hear from uh, Dr. Kamna Donko, the former power minister. So what exactly is at stake? And why is Ameri becoming such a big issue? Instead of saying, number one, people want to understand why you are boycotting the entire process as the minority, why you don't want to be there to be heard. And is it your position that this is just a political game by the majority, and so you don't want to be part of it, in the face of all the facts that we are uh, familiar with. Well, thank you so very much. I mean, uh, the minority's action in the American case is uh, based on our deep understanding of the procedure in Parliament, the rules of engagement in this, in this country, the rule of law, and the way to go about resolving issues of conflict or fraud, if they do appear. And so when the motion was filed in the first place in Parliament, uh, we thought that that was the wrong procedure adapted to rescind the decision of Parliament. Uh, we both got the same. Uh, the Speaker referred the committee, uh, the motion to a committee. But the motion was not taken. It was immediately referred to a committee. And since we boycotted uh, the move, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the attempts to move the motion in Parliament, we thought that, uh, rightly so, that we should not have anything to do with the motion in committee. So the committee boycotted the sitting because we had boycotted the moving, the moving of the motion in Parliament. We seriously objected to that. And we wanted to have no part in that because we think it's a wrong procedure. Now, why is it a wrong procedure? You've mentioned three committees. And why have we come to where we are? I mean, even in opposition, the MPP government has said that when they win power, they will, they will review the amenity. No one can take it from them. Executive power in this country presently resides in, in government. And government is equal, I mean, Article 295 or so, or 296, government is the executive authority. The executive authority is vested in the president. And so clearly, we don't have a problem with that. Now, but they ought to be processes. The act, the, 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 the ratification of the agreement was done in parliament. Parliament was Fontus official, or Fontus 
Parliament is functioned official in this matter. Mm. We finished, we've constituted the act. What does that legal uh, that Latin term mean? That means that Parliament has finished with its work. Parliament cannot be seized with jurisdiction to do that work. Okay. Now, why, do, why as, as a body, should we uphold this principle? We, we must because it gives confidence to the investor community that when an institution of state enters into a relationship, a contractual relationship with an investor, that institution cannot come back and say, well, we were misled into entering that relationship. If they feel strongly that there's something wrong with that relationship, that agreement, the proper place to go is to go to court. And that's, that's the basis, that's the principle. So for us, you cannot, by a motion in Parliament, seek to reverse what had been done in the previous Parliament. You cannot do that. Even when we pass a law and there is an amendment to the law, or the law is not working properly, it is the executive who will bring back an amendment to Parliament to be able to amend the law. You cannot resent it. A member of parliament cannot resent it. Now, so, why will... You are not saying executive can resent it. Is that what you are saying? I'm saying that executive can resent it. That's okay. what I'm saying. But because it's Katie Hammond, it's wrong. It's wrong. Executive okay. can resent it, not even by parliament. Executive... By an executive decision. Decision. Okay. They either resent it, executive can take the consequences and bear the consequences, or they go to court to adduce evidence to show that based on the set facts they now have, if these facts were made known to the country, mind you, the, the, the government, the parliament, was only rectifying an executive decision. Okay. So the executive is the executive is the executive. Mm. So the executive can go, go to court and say that if these facts were known to the executive at the time that we were entering into this contractual relationship with the company, the decision would have been different. So we pray in the court for a declaration that on the set facts, the contract is unquestionable. Mm. And then consequential orders. Okay? They're not doing that. What MPP, MPP is just doing that, or Maca, uh, Katie Hammer is doing that because MPP has a majority. And he will need no minority to do that. So we will not be part of that illegality. If you believe in the rule of law, we are not talking about the merits of a Mary. We are talking about procedure. And long in the case of Mushi Bajina, Mushi and Bajina, we have been told that rule of law is as important in substantive law as it is to procedure. You must use the right procedure in getting investors in this country to understand. And that goes in and ties in neatly with your fight against corruption. Get investors to understand that if they die and whine with executives who are in authority and engage in any malfeasance, they might stand exposed and be in jeopardy of their agreement being rescinded when there's a change in government. So you must tie it neatly, but not say that parliament, I'm a member of parliament, I was the ranking member of this committee, I sat down, I, I supported the motion, and uh, new facts have come into my, uh, me as the and ranking. The new facts show me that the project was overpriced by $150 million. We can save Ghana that amount of money. So if the cabinet is not in, interested in leading it, I should have an obligation to represent my constituents well. New facts show that the amount, the contract was inflated by 150, that, which otherwise should not have been the case. It means that you have reason to believe that the Ghana is paying more than it should have paid. Based on the set facts, the, the laws of Ghana do not prevent you from going to court to adduce evidence to show clearly that this contract, and that would have been a, a neater way of being a patriot 
and the true representative of not only your constituents, but the people of Ghana. And not come to parliament, use your parliamentary majority in a way... Since he was a part of it, if he was to proceed to court, he was going to plead of mistake or what? Misrepresentation. Okay. Misrepresentation. Mm. That, that, that there was a, a common misrepresentation here. And, and in fact, uh, if uh, we had averted or these matters were known to us, uh, we would not uh, uh, have come to this conclusion. And that misrepresentation, we all believed that that was what was happening. And, mm. But it turned you, out not you, to be the case. You may have followed, if not the full process yesterday, the Ameri also issued a statement and, and all. What, what do you have to say by way of your commentary on the process that transpired in the Well, house? Ameri is an investor. Mm. Ameri came to this country because we were having power crisis. Mm. Ameri brought in about 250 megawatts of power. Ameri is saying that when they brought in their equipment, they plugged the, the loophole and made sure that we had constant supply. It helped us t stabilize the power supply in this country. Ameri assessed that all through the processes we had value for money and that there was no attempt whatsoever to, to, to shortchange the people of Ghana. In fact, they, they are even further ascertain that uh, their, their tariffs is the most uh, leverage or what is it? I mean, when you look at all tariffs in the, in, uh, that are paid by utility companies in this country or providers yeah. in this country, they are the, the best so far. And so you think that... Which uh, you know is not true. Well, I, I'm not, uh, that's what Mary's view. You see, <laughs> I'm not even holding brief for Mary. Mm. I'm just saying that as a country, we must believe in the rule of law. Okay. Now, hmm. Andrew, you, you see, the Addison Committee did its work and said this thing was tainted by fraud, right? And that you will seek a renegotiation. If they did not agree to renegotiate, then you abrogate the contract on the basis of the fraud. And we know Pricewaterhouse has also done some work. So what is it that we are waiting for? Ameri CEO Maha Al Alali said that, quote, Ameri prides itself on the partnerships that we forge across the world, supplying power to countries when they need it most. As a responsible organization, we appreciate the chance to address any misconceptions about our work. So as far as we are concerned, there are only misconceptions about our work in Ghana, only from a point of mutual understanding and cooperation with all stakeholders can we move forward. When we entered Ghana, the country was going through its worst crisis, energy <coughs> crisis. The only option on the table for the government was a rental deal which offered no value for money to the country. We are proud to say that we are the only company working in the region which offered and delivered a short-term five-year boot that's built, own, operate and transfer solution. Installed in record time, the power plant features brand new state-of-the-art GE turbines, among others. So why can't we do what we may have suggested by the Addison Committee work that we would have done? And we are going through all of the, this. Well, uh, like someone said, uh, and to quote, I believe, Mr. Asidu Nketia, there are several, several ways of killing a cat. No, Kobnaji. Kobnaji, rather. Oh, thank you very much for the correction. You see, um, I believe that government and its wisdom, and by that I mean the executive. Because I, as I sit here, I'm wearing two hats. As a member of parliament, uh, member of the legislature, and of course, speaking for government in this regard. And that government is taking steps to deal with the Ameri issue and the substantive matters that arise from the contract. Uh, uh, in its own time. Uh, but, you see, it's, it's surprising to me how the minority is seeking to, if you like, throw dust in the eyes of the Ghanaian public that the motion that Mr. Katie Hammond filed in Parliament 
constitute an illegality and that parliament is functus officio in respect of the Ameri transaction and that if anybody has an issue with Ameri, the proper forum for them to revert to is a court of law. Strange. Strange argument. Explain. You see, uh, Parliament derives the power of approving loans and international transactions under, I believe, Article 181 of the 1992 Constitution. And mm. if you may permit me, let me just read. It says here that Parliament may, by resolution supported by votes of a majority of all the members of Parliament, authorize the government to enter into an agreement for the granting of a loan out of any public fund or public account. Now, it goes on in 1816. Uh, no, I'm coming. Um, five which relates to international business transactions, that mm. this article shall, with the necessary modifications by Parliament, apply to an international business or economic transaction to which the party, to which the government is a party, as it applies to a loan. So Parliament is vested with the power of approving loans and international transactions that the government of Ghana and testing to. Now, the NDC wants us to believe that after this exercise, after the exercise of this power, Parliament has no role or function to play in any transaction that they have given their approval to. Forgetting, conveniently, that Article 297, the implied powers that are given to persons who are vested certain authorization to revoke the power of approval. What is Samson, nice let me, I'll read it for you. Mm. Article 297 says, in this constitution and in any other law, and for purposes of this, I'll go to D, mm. where a power is conferred to make any constitutional or statutory instrument regulation or rule or pass any resolution or give any direction the power shall be construed as including the power exercisable in the same manner to amend or to revoke the constitutional or statutory instrument regulation rules or resolution or direction as the case may be so Parliament has the power to the extent that is given the power to approve, to revoke. So if Mr. Katie Hammond, who was the ranking member of the committee that approved or made recommendations to the plenary to approve this transaction, has subsequently come to say that, look, information that has come to my knowledge after the fact clearly points to one that would not have elicited approval had we known it at the time that we were given approval. He's not entitled on Article 297 to bring an application before the body that approved that transaction to revoke it. Mm. So why are they saying that Parliament is functus official? What, what do they mean by that? And that the action to seek to revoke the resolution that was passed by Parliament to approve the Ameri transaction constitutes an illegality. It beats me. What, 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 what is their fear? It beats you because you're not inter <coughs> applying the rules of constitutional interpretation to what you have read. That's why it beats you. Help me. Oh, you have read the... So, you read Parliament... Read it again. You see the order. You see the order. That's why it beats you. Apply constitutional interpretation to the order that you have read. Which order? The, the, the article. And what does it say? Oh, you don't you apply it. You don't read and, and take the resolution. Apply it. When you apply it. I'm saying that to the extent that 
a power and then you go and read the oh, you please. read the sit Accra, Accra Metro Assembly case. My brother, where the Supreme Court has pronounced on that, this doesn't require any constitutional interpretation. Mm. Oh, it requires the Supreme Court. No, no, but the way you are even the going, the way you are even going, it requires it requires the words are the so clear and unambiguous. <laughs> Parliament has the power to approve transactions of international nature. I'm saying that that constitution mm. gives the parliament an implied power to revoke any approval that it gives. He's referring you to a case. And perhaps maybe... Samson, maybe you wait, see, wait, just, just a maybe second. You have to go just a second. Case. Maybe also, you may want to draw your attention to uh, Indebu Gray versus the AG, in which, in which also the Supreme Court said that, or affirmed that, when Parliament has done its job of ratification, its power ceases from that point. The document becomes that of the executive. Like he said, executive, executive, executive. It becomes that of the executive. So the executive can deal with it, you know, in the manner it finds, it finds just. And um, uh, in terms of saying his uh, friend, um, Yao Opong, <coughs> says he agrees with him on the on that score and says that and says that you know that position was to highlight the concept of the separation of powers and that in my view and I'm quoting him, in my view there is no need going to court the executive can go ahead to abrogate the contract alternatively all that Parliament can do is to pass another resolution setting aside its earlier resolution. That's what is which will leave the contract, which will leave the contract intact, but ineffective on the authority of Attorney General versus a Balkan Energy and that line of cases. Samson, mm. well, all that I'm saying is, is that the assertion that the procedure adopted by KT Hammond mm. is an illegality. It's false mm. because you see that the provisions are so clear. Yeah, what Katie Hammond is seeking to do is to say that look, Parliament approved this transaction based on certain information that was made available to the committee. Right now, subsequent information clearly shows that that approval was procured through misrepresentation. Right, we as a body have the authority under Article 297 to undo that approval that we gave. Simply mm. So what is the illegality about that procedure? Because like you clearly read, the power to do includes the power to undo. Absolutely. So Katie Hammond has brought an application to Parliament that mm. look, to the extent that if we knew <coughs> what we know today, this approval would not have been given. Revoke the approval. But is that is that an illegality? Still, That's the is question. That that still not, subject, not, not subject to the Supreme Court's, you know, you see, sort of, of all, interpretation who, who that brought, says who after brought the resolution for approval? The power is who seized. brought the resolution for approval? Executive. If the executive is minded to rescind the approval, who will bring the, uh, uh, the decision? Executive. What are you talking about? No, but the power to pass in what capacity is it is vested in parliament regardless of who brought the document okay. oh it's important okay. what, what makes it important the very rule that you read okay uh, 106 all right look the mm. power <laughs> to pass resolutions is vested in parliament parliament has exercised that power have passed the resolution it has been established according to katie hammond that some new information requires us to revoke the passage of the resolution that we gave. Mm. You sit here and say it's an illegality. When the Constitution clearly supports that line of action. Mm. Look, so far, I have not heard them say that the substantive issue that has been raised mm. by Katie Hammond is mm. something that they oppose. Yeah, okay. And that, yes, by all means, uh, uh, we, we will support any set thing to save their public purse. Mm. However, the procedure that was adopted is what they have an issue. And I'm saying that Parliament has the power in its own self. Mm. Per it, the it's, provisions it's, of the two nine seven is being advanced, and and um, th this this is uh, a, a law teacher, uh, 
Mr. Kapama, the at Gimpa, he says that the the parliamentary approval of international agreements, you refer to Article 1815. Mm -hmm. The parliamentary approval of international agreements is procedural and not substantive. The executive enters into the contract. Parliament is not a party and cannot rescind. He says that. So the but argument, that the argument on implied, that the, the argument on implied, on implied the power, approval. on implied powers, can only be laughable. The implied power <laughs> is at the time of exercising the power, the majority is out of order. Well, that's his view. Mm. But my, you see, uh, how 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 would you exercise the power of, of approval and? Disapproval at the same time. The point is that it is it's only the possible. parties to the contract that can do the recession. The recession. You see, wait, that's what wait. Saying. You see, in what you capacity is KT about bringing it? You don't get you the see, argument. Mm. You are not getting the whole see. thing. It means that next time, uh, oh, please, wait, please, wait, wait, allow him, please, wait, allow him. Wait. Yeah. Mm. Parliament is vested with the power to approve actions that have been taken by the executive. Who enters the contract here? Who executive. brings that action? No, sorry. Who, wait, who enters wait, the contract? Wait, wait. Is it As parliament between or? the parties to the contract, mm. it is the government of Ghana mm -hmm. and the private third party. Yes, okay. and the government of Ghana, according to your constitution, is exercising executive power, and that Absolutely. is who? I don't, I don't have a problem. That's, uh -huh. the, that's the executive. They have entered into a it's contract. It's not parliament. No. Correct. So mm. I don't have a problem with the contract between government and Ameri. Okay. Now, that contract was subjected to a parliamentary procedure mm. by way of ratification, which was uh, uh, done by a parliamentary resolution. Okay. The constitution in Article 297 says that any authority vested with the power to approve either a constitutional instrument or pass a resolution has the power, implied power, to revoke the passage of that resolution. And I'm saying that what KT Hammond is seeking to do is that to the extent that if he knew what he knew at the time that this resolution came to parliament for consideration, he would not have voted in the but manner that there, he did. There are a number parliament of lawyers. Should revoke there are, there are a number the of resolution lawyers. that was passed. There, that is all. There are a number of lawyers we can say are. Uh, so, somewhat disinterested. Oh, but Samson, and I'm so, not interested and so, in whether they are disinterested come, or not. Because come, you and uh, I know that wait, five wait. judges sitting on the case you, you, you arrive at wait. different conclusions. Right. Completely. Uh, yes, and on this table right here, we have a number of lawyers who are sending in uh, input. And they are saying that you can deal with the resolution. But that is what not we are dealing the contract. with. contracts. Uh, who has tied the contract? Okay. Now, Kofi, Kofi, come in briefly. Who? All right. Katie Hammond Kofi, hasn't said that okay. the contract. Kofi, Kofi come, in, come, in, come in briefly. Let me now give and you. Do you find or you do not mm -hmm. that the minority has a superior argument in this case? Let me answer it this way. Anybody who tells you this is a simple matter is not a student of jurisprudence. Prudence. The minority says it's simple, they can't do it. The majority says, oh, you can't do it. No. I have been watching and studying this, and look, it goes this way, I come down. So, here's the point. The minority seems to have a point. But the point is not they very obvious. They seem or they do? That's why I'm being careful. They seem, but the point is not very obvious because it's jurisprudential in nature. There are policy implications to this thing. There are so many other aspects to it. Okay. But my only issue with them is that okay, I Okay, sorry for this rude intervention. Oh. We ought to break here and return to hear you. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Right, you're welcome back. This is News File, it's your most authoritative news analysis show. And um, another lawyer just called me on the phone and he said, okay, look, Mesa is making a point and you know, ought to pay attention. If Parliament says we have withdrawn our approval, you can decide what you make of your contract. That's if your contract is yes. without approval, Absolutely. is this still a contract? Yes. Yes, so can so we go on? That's part of That's what I think. It's not simple, so let's deal. Now, here's a situation where Parliament says we pass something. Now, a member of parliament comes and says, I have new information, which if you knew, you wouldn't have passed this. And therefore, he is urging parliament to rescind or revoke their approval. The question is, 
If Parliament revokes their approval, what is the effect on the contract? Because Mr. Mesa is saying, or Mesa is saying, we are revoking our approval. Let me give you an analogy, hopefully it works. Your daughter is going to get married. He brings you a fine young man. You approve the marriage. Two years down in the marriage, you realize the gentleman is a total washout. And you tell your daughter, well, I approve the marriage, but now I am not happy with it. It doesn't annul the marriage. And Kofi's example, Kofi's home. I know where the example is coming. It doesn't to get into any wrong hands. So let me continue. No. I have a worry. My worry is this. If a new parliament can cancel what an old parliament does, that's dangerous and terrible. But if a new parliament finding new relevant information cannot do anything about something that they have done in a misapprehension, that's also worrying. However, rules of estoppel will apply here. Because when you have approved the contract like the marriage, and there has been substantial performance of it, when there has been resources <coughs> expended, and you come back down the line and say, I redraw the approval, we haven't been told what effect Parliament wants this to have on the contract. Because indeed, you can go ahead and do the redrawal of the approval, and the contract will go ahead as usual. So the question is, if this country is truly being cheated, I agree with the minority that maybe it is not Katie Hamon who has to do it. Maybe somebody from the executive has to do it. Now, if Katie Hamon is the one doing it within parliament, as a member of parliament, I am asking myself, why is he not filing his issue as new information for parliament's notification so that parliament itself, okay? And here you are talking about how they do it is another matter. Okay, parliament itself now takes some action to say, okay, we pass this thing at this time, but whether we are going to pass a new one or amend this or, as you are saying, revoke it, we will do so. But us all knowing that it may not have any effect on the contract itself. It looks to me like censure. It may not have any effect on the contract. Yes. <laughs> this, this is a contract of international nature. <laughs> yes. uh, okay? And because of that nature, by, the, by virtue of Article, 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 Article 1815, Without the approval, prior approval, mm -hmm. it is unconstitutional. And the Supreme Court has been consistent on it. Mm -hmm. So, yes. The approval is given. Right. And the problem is this. Once the approval is given and there is substantial performance, mm -hmm. note that it's an international contract. Okay. It is subject to ANSI trial and other international rules, not right. just your local yeah. right. students. Right. Now, okay. after that, so, you know, we have to deal with this. I am not against Parliament's action. I worry that the minority is not being involved because I think this is important for our democracy. They should be involved. If you think the process is wrong, use the same process to prove that what they are doing is wrong and let's see what the right thing is because you haven't done anything to question the substantial issue. We have said at Timani that $150 million was lost to this country and we think that the executive should do something about it. The executive. We think that some of this information should be used by the executive yeah. to renegotiate the contract. Well, they are not willing to renegotiate. We understand. That's that another is. matter. So right. as for parliament, okay. what is doing? I mm. think my parliament, mm. I am happy that my parliament is looking at writing something that it mm. says. Okay. Well, not parliament, but right. Katie Amon says may have gone okay. wrong. Okay, so Kofi, Kofi is saying, look, clearly we can identify certain issues. It is about their resolution in ratifying that they are dealing with. They cannot claim to say they want to rescind the contract because they were not party to the contract. So anybody who makes the argument that they are rescinding the contract is wrong. So the minority may have been right that there's a procedure that has been effected. But the question being asked, has Casey, Katie also told you that we are rescinding the contract rather than because if he comes to court and he says recession, recession, what else are you receiving? Uh, what, what is the rescinding about? Okay, so also is looking ahead and saying, let's not forget that whatever we do, it may end up in the international tribunal somehow, and once again, we may have difficulties. What do you stand on Wait, this, Ameri? Uh, Ameri, are they cooperating with the committee? Yes, they were there. And yes, energy. They yes, are. yes, they are there. Okay, so it's a minority that is not taking part in the <laughs> process. Yes, they are not. Okay. But the, See, the, the, the people in the previous government are subject to the process. That's why uh, Comrade Donko was there. This whole thing, the contract has already been executed, or? Right. Yes. And Way uh, before it went to Parliament for approval. Yeah, but it's executed. Yes. And uh, they are producing power.
power yes mm -hmm. as we speak yes mm -hmm. they do well i think common sense will demand some renegotiation if there's any evidence that I fraud or misrepresentation took place i think i don't have a problem with parliament gathering information building up information which would then provide the executive an informed basis to renegotiate because the contract is executed they are producing power you know so really i think we should rather go be very practical the executive should get a married to sit with them and renegotiate the this deal. is a married statement they are not amenable to renegotiation they say a married acknowledge the government of ghana has every right to assess all public contracts for value for money or quality of delivery the company strongly believes the project delivered on both an independent report by renowned auditors price waterhouse and coopers found that out of seven similar projects the ameri plant uh, at takradi offered the best value for money. No, but if we Excuse have me. evidence... <laughs> so, let me speak to that specifically. <laughs> okay. We can prove at Iman that that statement is wrong. Okay. America can say whatever he wants to Absolutely. say. Absolutely. All right? But okay. we are the and, beneficiaries and, and we, of the contract. I am saying this on record that... That price was a house they Yes, they were wrong. They that, that they compared this to other um, uh, power uh, PPAs we have, and this was one of the cheapest. Who gave them the land? All right, who prepared uh, uh, the, the basis? Okay, for installing. I'm a bit. You are not saying Price Waterhouse didn't say this. I am saying that America Price Waterhouse saying would have been wrong. Anybody, including Price Waterhouse, okay, that look. says that this is the cheapest power arrangement we have is wrong. Look, okay. we need we need a full disclosure on that evidence. Exactly. That new evidence. Yes, exactly. That, that was what we I need. That's what I just said. When we get done. that, exactly, I think we can move on. Hmm. Renegotiation, if they say they won't go for renegotiation, you confront them with the facts. Fa confront them with the facts and in the court of law yeah. and seek something. That's what you do. That. Okay, so can we find out law. this? Are you saying, as a minority, that this new evidence is something you are unaware of? Very unaware of. You don't know the details. We don't what know exactly the details. Is it? What exactly is it? Yeah, what is Where it? does it come from? We need to put what does it problem. How does it affect the but contract? See, so I'm saying KT so should submit that to yes. Parliament for Parliament's information. That is, you see, but Kofi, that is yes. an executive. You see, what no. you have said mm -hmm. is that even if the decision goes through, and I, and I believe that it will go through because they don't need the minority to, to pass such a resolution, what becomes the, the contract effect of it? The effect of it. Uh, we, we could have just told us. The power, the plant is running and producing power and incurring liabilities. And Ghana, I mean, under the contract, the previous existing contract, is under obligation to pay for those liabilities. Mm -hmm. What will be our position at international arbitration? It doesn't end there. So I'm saying that let's do things neatly. What is this going to be? What will be the impact on the international community about our treatment of investors? We don't know. But we can deal with it. This no, in but you're way. not suggesting that we find something wrong with an international. No, that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. I'm, saying that I'm not pushing that too much. Yeah. I'm not saying that we can deal with it in a neat way. Mm. Confront them. Okay. In this country, okay, okay, okay. okay. Honorable, 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 Again, again, they are asking questions about what are the new facts that that we we are dealing with, and again. Have we thought of the implications after Parliament does what it intends to do? Uh, absolutely. You see, I, I don't think people are listening to Katie Hammond. Mm. He's saying that Ameri made specific representations mm -hmm. based on which he approved the consideration of 14.56 mm -hmm. kilowatt hour price that he approved mm -hmm. as a member of Parliament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, all the representations that Ameri made, mm -hmm. they have not abided by those re representations. Mm -hmm. Clearly, if those representations have not been well known, they have not abided by them. Then uh, they are breaches. So, something quickly. Not so, breaches, okay. So, so huh. then they become breaches. Hold on. They are not breaches. Uh, they are not breaches. Misrepresentations. Breaches. Misrepresentations. See, no, but no, 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 that's no, no. in See, the uh, Can I clear this? Can I clear this just in a second? Mm. Now, Honorable, when. Parliament succeeds in what it, it intends to do. What will be government's obligation under the contract? 
government would have to take steps to comply with the approval or the rescission that the, uh, the, the parliament has, they are not has bound issued. To do that. Well, if per the constitution you mm -hmm. require parliamentary approval mm -hmm. for an international will business the plant, transaction, will the plants be in operation? I believe that it will be in operation, okay. but they can take steps to comply with the. They if cannot. it will be because in operation, not? if it will be in operation, operation. My question is. What will be government's responsibility? Will government have liabilities to discharge to under discharge the contract? I, I do not think so. Oh, it will be in operation. <laughs> yes. And yet you, see, you will not pay, no, 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 you sir, not pay sir, what you offer. Of course. No, no, that, that's that's not that's not that's not the point. Okay. We we all say that we are a country of rules. Yes. Okay. Now, unless you're telling me that. It doesn't matter. Oh, after all, even if they made misrepresentations uh, to the extent that they are producing the power, let it be. No, did they miss okay. Okay, so <laughs> all of you, all of you, all of you, it's okay. You hijacked the first time. You did hijack the first time. Yes, yeah, but it's okay. Uh, it's fair. I'm just wondering the misrepresentation. Yes. The, does it come with some financial loss? Absolutely. To the state? Yes. If so, Kuku says full disclosure. Yes. Then that's all we need. D we'll move on from. Yes. This. Then you see, my point is this. The executive doesn't need parliament if it has evidence of oh, fraud. Hold on, hold on, hold on, please. Let me finish. Don't have time. <laughs> proceed to renegotiate or abrogate. One. Number two, if parliament passes this, I am of the view that our parliament, sovereign as it is, must have the power to rescind its decision. The executive should take a cue from it and based on that and the information on misrepresentation, approach Ameri and say. Your point of the executive needing, that, uh, ha having no need of parliament. Yes. It's been endorsed by some of your colleague lawyers who have been sending messages here. Yeah. That then it renders the parliamentary thing needless. It is moot. So but I'm saying so I'm saying it is moot. But I'm saying listen, I don't think it's moot. Hold at all. on, I beg you. Listen. Parliament is sovereign, it's separate from the executive. What the executive will do or not do cannot be controlled by parliament. But if parliament, for instance, censures is giving you a message. If parliament rescinds its approval, it's like saying that my daughter, I approve your marriage, but now I don't. Take a cue. And I'm saying our executive should take that plus. The information on Mr. President said that, look, we are under pressure. And the pressure is coming from this fact. They could have done it without parliament. So I am saying, in short, parliament should go ahead. The minority should be part of this process. It will set a certain precedent which is useful. Mm. So anybody knows that if you bring stuff to parliament the under plant, certain The course, plant will be pretenses. operating after the, 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 after, the after, yes. after the said recession has taken place. Yes. The contract becomes unconstitutional. The government will be discharging liabilities on an unconstitutional contract? Is that what will be going on? I honestly believe that this recession cannot stop the contract. If it does, we will come up under a liability. But if the government or the it executive- leave the contract without Let ratification. Finish. Absolutely. No, no. So they have to take steps. No, no. If the executive can prove that there has been fraud, fraud vitiates everything. That's correct. Yes. Then they can go ahead and renegotiate or cancel it. Mm. Not be on the power of the parliamentary recession, okay. but that one gives them energy to push on this one. But that would be the effect said, of the recession. No, they can do it now. We've said yeah. it already at the well, end that there's a lot, and that's what Addison's group is trying to, to do. Out. So that's from your point, from your point, mm. it brings us back to courts. It brings us back to court. <laughs> and then the, and okay. the procedure. I, 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 I okay. Not okay. think so. Okay. Not okay. necessary. Okay. At all. okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank well. you very much, gentlemen. Thank you very much, gentlemen. My guests have been Abdul Malik Wekou Bako, editor in chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper. Kofi Bentel is a lawyer and vice president Imani Africa, looking out for his daughters. And uh, <laughs> Inu yeah, 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 yeah. MP <laughs> is a lawyer and MP Tamale Central, ranking member, <laughs> legal and constitutional <laughs> committee. I, and the Honorable Andrew Ejapa Mesa is <laughs> member of parliament for Second D. He's also a lawyer. People have been asking, like Isaac Adongo, where uh, have, has uh, Andrew been all along? And they left people uh, miscommunicating for their parties and governments all along. <laughs> All right, have a good afternoon. My outfit, as always, is paid for by Latida. <laughs>